Okay, so I've come into the kitchen today to make some fire cider and I'm going to talk you through how I'm going to make it. And it's a pretty simple recipe and I don't go elaborate on it and I'll talk you through and show you how I make it. Okay, for the fire cider you're going to need a small onion, you can use red or white, it doesn't really matter, I just happen to have a small red onion. Fresh ginger, chilies, doesn't really matter what type as long as we've got some heat. Some rosemary, some thyme, some a whole head of garlic, honey. Although we won't need this today. Um, lemon, apple cider vinegar. This is the very last of my homemade apple cider vinegar from my last batch. You can see where the level was originally. It is right at the bottom. So I'll be making a small batch of a uh, fire cider today, and I'll be putting on a new batch of apple cider vinegar. And when that's ready, I can make more fire cider then but otherwise i'm just gonna have to do this although i could buy my own apple cider vinegar which is another if you don't have your own apple cider vinegar it, it doesn't have to be homemade you can buy apple cider vinegar quite easily in the shops these days not so much in the uk if you can't get the um you know the raw apple cider vinegar don't worry about it use regular apple cider vinegar use white wine vinegar use any vinegar you, it, but you can do this with anything the main Thing. You get lots of good nutrients from the apple cider vinegar, but it's only one part of the fire cider. You're getting goodness from everything else, the lemon, the ginger, the garlic, everything. So if you can't get apple cider vinegar, you can still make this. It's not the end of the world. Use any vinegar you want. I probably wouldn't recommend malt vinegar, <laughs> mostly because it has such a, such a strong flavour. Um, but white distilled vinegar will do just as well, and it's what I would use um, if in a pinch anyway. So. I won't need the honey today, but I will tell you how to use that after at the end. So I'm just going to start prepping these ingredients, and I'll talk to bleh, try again, talk you through what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got my ingredients ready to go. I've peeled my onion and my garlic. Decided on one of these big long chilies. I have no idea what variety these are. I buy the mixed chilies, but uh, I haven't tasted. It. I should try it because it's hot. Um, mm, not so hot. Maybe I need two of those. I might get a second one of those. Um, I have my lemon ready to go on, and I've decided on a piece of ginger about so big. <laughs> That's not very informative, I know. Let's see, it's about oh, two and a half to three inches long, inch and a half wide, inch deep. I have to peel that and grate that yet and uh, we'll start layering them up in this jar and I'm going to put them in not totally compact but I'm not going to leave much air in between them I'm limited on how much cider vinegar I've got but also just to reduce the air pockets in there too so I'm just going to slice up a proper piece of this and see if this is hot enough otherwise I'm going to have to get another chilli okay I tried a bit at the top, they are spicy, I'm now choking on chilli. Oh, 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 spicy. Anyway, so <laughs> one spicy chilli will be perfectly fine for a jar this size. Oh, goodness. Right, okay. So, first of all, I'm going to slice up the onion and pop it in the bottom. And then I'm going to chop up the garlic. Well, I'm going to crush it with my knife and chop it up and pop that in. Same with the chilli. I'm not going to de-seed it. I'm just going to chop it up and pop that in too and then we'll work on the lemon so first of all let's get this onion in Pop down those slices a bit with my knife i've left it sliced it just doesn't really matter slice it chop it do what you want so now i'm going to crush the cloves of garlic with the side of my knife and roughly chop them and pop them in and I'll give the jar a little wee twisty shake and those bits of chopped garlic will drop down into the gaps in between the onion to take up some of the big uh, spaces in there. Now you could grate the uh, garlic you could use a fine grater like this which is what I'll be using for the ginger 
but I just find it quicker to chop the garlic and it doesn't need to be grated truthfully. The ginger, it's easier to grate it than it is to chop it, so <laughs> those are the decisions for that. Now both onion and garlic are antiseptic and antibacterial. Not only that is the good decongestants, so for something like fire cider, it's mostly a preventative kind of a tonic for colds and flu. Um, although obviously taking it while you've got a cold or flu will also help with speedy recovery because the antiseptic and the antibacterial in the garlic and the other ingredients help to lessen the symptoms of the cold. help the garlic to and the onions to kind of settle lower into the jar rather than shaking it or hitting it it works better if you kind of twist back and forth really rapidly and that goes for anything you fill in a, a I don't know t coffee in a coffee jar or tin you can get more in if you do the same or sugar or whatever it is you're trying to put into a storage jar okay and next we'll put in the chili I think no, I'll tell you what I'm going to do next. I'm going to put the herbs in because I can poke them down into the jar. So what I'm using is some fresh thyme and some fresh rosemary. So I'm just going to strip the leaves from the rosemary and roughly from the thyme. The thyme not such a big deal. Um, and just pop them in the jar. And rosemary and thyme are both antiseptic and antibacterial. Rosemary is also good for the circulation and thyme is uh, an expectorant as well which means um, it helps to loosen mucus in the lungs and in the throat and chest and such like. Um, so if you have like a chesty cough or um, a, a chesty cold or a, a nasal cold, it will also help with that. The thyme is a bit tricky to get off the stalks, but I'll just chuck that into and I'll just rip the tops off um, rather than try to get all those little leaves off. Just rip the top off and pop that into. Another good tip if you've got um, a chesty cold is you can take a clove of garlic and slice it in half and rub the juices just rub the whole half a clove on the base of your feet which sounds really weird but trust me it works you know how if you have garlic and the next morning you can smell it and you can smell it through your skin well that's because garlic will travel through the whole body um, so rubbing it on the base of your feet means you get the it has expectorant properties too so it will help with um, clearing congestion this is also useful for children which can be a little more fussy but if they're quite young children sort of um, babies and toddlers I probably wouldn't use garlic but there's no reason why you couldn't but um, if they're very young, something might, you could do the same with half an onion and it's not quite as strong. It's, um, when they're quite young, quite sensitive to flavours and scent, scents and smells. So if they're used to garlic and onion, they might not mind the garlic. If not, then onion is probably a safer call. Um, otherwise, they might find it a little bit strange or distressing. But for grown-ups, just go with garlic, unless you're allergic. <laughs> now you could use dried thyme for this. I've just put in a few sprigs of thyme and a few sprigs of rosemary. I've not measured it. I've just kind of just grabbed a few. If you were using dried herbs, for a jar this size, you'd probably want, mm, I don't know, maybe it's a tablespoon of each. Obviously, you'd want more if you eat to make a bigger batch, but uh, this is quite a small batch, so I'm just going to shake those down again. 
Okay, next, what should we do with next? We'll do chili. I'm just gonna rough chop that, pop that in there. Then I'm gonna peel this ginger and I'm gonna grate it and that's gonna go in there. And then I'm gonna zest this lemon uh, first before I do anything else, before I do anything else with the lemon. And then I'm gonna slice this lemon into thin slices and pack them in the top of that. When you grate ginger, you'll end up with all the fibrous bits not going through, or well, most of them. Normally I would chuck that away if I was making a curry. But because I'm going to be straining this fire cider down the line, I'm just going to ch chuck that in anyway. any sort of grater to get this off. You could use the same grater as the ginger. I just find one of these is a lot better at getting the zest off of fruit, off citrus fruit. What I might do with this is I want to squeeze the rest of this lemon juice in before I slice it. Maybe I should have done that first. Take that tip, do that first, then slice it up. Okay, so I've put those slices of lemon in. Really, I should have squeezed the lemon first to do that. And I've kind of pushed it down fairly firmly squeezing the juice at the same time just with my grater we could use a spoon so now what I'm going to do is add the apple cider vinegar or whatever vinegar you're using I'm going to see how far this goes and hopefully there's enough I'm hoping there's enough to leave just a little tiny trickle in the bottom of this jar and I can use it as a starter for my apple cider vinegar that I'm going to be making for the next batch um, but we shall see if I can open it Pour that in slowly. And I'm going to use my knife to loosen the things up that are actually compacted in a bit too hard now. But just loosen a wee bit just so that the vinegar can get in between the ingredients. Okay, looks like I might have enough. Again, just poke it down so it get in all any gaps. You want your ingredients to be covered by the vinegar. You don't want any really sticking above the surface because they could go bad. Looks like I might have just enough. I've got a wee bit left in the bottom there. Which I'll use for my next batch. Let's prod them down. Make sure everything's covered best I can. and pop the lid on. Now you want to let this sit for as long as you, well, say two to three weeks. Um, three or four is better, one or two will do. If you were desperate, I would say leave it a day or two and you could start using a little bit off the surface, well not off the surface, but you know a little wee bit out of it. Um, I'm going to give this a shake once a day so it won't look as pretty as this, things are start, going to start to get mixed up. And after this is steeped for, I'm going to leave this a couple of weeks. And hopefully by then, um, I'll have another batch of apple cider getting close to being usable. And I'll be able to make a bigger batch of this up then. 
Um, you could also make two jars. You could make um, one jar for a short time, use it as soon as possible, and make a second jar you can put aside and, and leave it to steep for longer. And when it's steep for as long as you like it to be, then you'll get some honey. And what you'll do is you will strain this through a sieve first uh, into a, a jug or a bowl or something. And then I would strain it again. You don't need to, but I would strain it again through something like um, a coffee filter or a piece of muslin, something like that, to get out any remaining sediment. Although with this, this shouldn't really be an awful lot um, because there isn't any little powdery bits in like... Uh, ground cinnamon or anything like that, which there would be in possibly other recipes or other uh, remedies. So once you've strained this, you're going to stir in uh, around about, with this sort of a jar, size jar, around about a quarter of a cup of honey um, or a little bit more. Taste it, you can always add some more to it. I'd probably recommend a quarter cup at least. Um, I'm not sure yet if I'll be adding any more, but at least a quarter cup. I will obviously need to melt my honey down a bit to be able to get it to mix through. And then just store it in a sterilised bottle or jar. doesn't matter, use an old jam jar and sterilise up. I'll be putting up a video on how to sterilise bottles and jars um, for preserves as well. So, And that's all there is to it. The fire cider ticket, mostly as a remedy once you have a cold although you can take it beforehand as a preventative the lemon obviously is good for the immune system for the vitamin c and everything else will help with combating the common cold um just keeping your body healthy but truthfully it'll be better served as a remedy as opposed to preventative as a preventative you'd be better off with elderberry syrup which has lots of vitamin C in it and um, whereas the ingredients in this is more like uh, decongestants and stuff when you actually have a cold or flu. So there we go, easy fire cider.